Hey, um, what are you doing? I'm procrastinating. What, what are you procrastinating about? Because I'm going to tackle a project today that I've been putting off for a long time, and I don't feel like doing it. But what's that? That's life on a boat, right? Yeah, but what are you tackling? <laughs> My name is Ed. I'm an ex-musician turned politician turned accountant who now imagines himself a sea captain. This is Lynn. She's an ex-model, retired photographer, and the love of my life. Three years ago, we bought a boat. No experience and completely clueless. Since then, we have traveled over 10,000 miles along the Atlantic coast and the Bahamas. Join us as we continue the adventure, exploring exciting places, meeting new people, and having the time of our lives while trying not to sink. Okay, well, here's the project. It's my windlass. And as you can see, oh, let me climb up here a little bit and see if you can get a better view. Okay, well, there's the project for today. It's my windlass. And as you can see, it's rusty. And uh, it's been this way, well, it's been rusty since we purchased the boat. Um, but it seems like it's gotten a lot worse, and I'll have Lynn show you exactly what she found uh, on the bow. The reason I've been procrastinating on this is because I can't fit back there. I have a, a bucket which holds our power cable in the way, the actual take up assembly whatever that is for the power cable there is a wooden barrier back here and that separates this compartment from the chain compartment which is on the other side so I have all the chain to get out of the way and anyway this is the reason that I've been putting this off but I can put it off no longer you can see all the rust and I'm just gonna have to take care of it Take a break now. <laughs> now at least I can do this job in my pajamas. At least this part of the job. <laughs> a little bit better view now that I have the take-up bucket out of the way. But you can see this wood divider wall here that separates the chain from this space is in my way. And I've taken out all the screws and it's still not budging, so it's time to get out the hammer. Oh no. Hatteras made, right? <clears throat> it's like more than an inch thick. Oh wow, look at that. For what? I don't know. <laughs> Safety. This is bad, so. Well. Just 
hope this came off. Yeah, I just broke two of them off. Okay, well, it's definitely a good thing we're working on this before we Well, three of the bolts are rusted so much I broke the heads off of a screwdriver. Easily, too, right? Yeah. Of course, they're the three that I'm next to. The other three are on the other side. Oh, so we can't wait to see the joy on that. I don't know so this is the side that has the rust, so this is the side of the leak. We've got a little bit of core damage here. I don't know how bad. Hopefully it doesn't go too far, because right above this is the, the pulpit. But, and I can see the pulpit right there. The pulpit goes about that far. And I get some rot around this circle. I don't even know what this circle is from. It must have been original hole for a chain or something, I'm not sure. Oh, it could have been the original chain hole. The motor is fine and the gearbox seems fine as well. It is the mounting plate that rusted and needs to be replaced. To help you get out? Got it? Yeah. Okay, well, what Lynn noticed a couple of months ago was that uh, these screws or these bolts were no longer flush. Now, we had always known that there was a little bit of a problem with the windlass because there was rust on it, but we couldn't see any water ever coming in. We just assumed it was an old problem that had been fixed until she noticed this. We don't know how long these have been up. It could have, she may have noticed it right away, but we have not anchored out in a year since we didn't go anywhere this year. So this must have happened a year ago and we just didn't notice it. Can any of them move? No. It might require a special tool. Oh, that one's kind of moving. Is it coming up still or? Yeah. You're gonna need something bigger than what we got there, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just assume that comes off and I can pull these two pieces. Easy peasy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a tool for this someplace. We do. It's uh, it's in my locker. And this is all the chain we have between your legs. I don't know how many feet that is. Might as well measure it. It doesn't look like much. It's at least 300 feet. Do you? Yeah, think but so? no, we had it out the whole time. Mm -hmm. I don't think we took it all out. This is officially all out. Well, in our survey, it says how long. Well, that was easy. You need a thing for the springs? Nothing on it? Yeah, I don't know why it's there or what. Let me see it. I'm not sure exactly what it was supposed to be doing, but it was just sitting there. I can't see your hands. Oh, there's nothing connecting it or anything. Okay. As you can see, I am here at my land house. That's because I just got tired of messing around with that windlass and, well, actually, I shouldn't complain. I got a lot further in a single afternoon than I thought I would. Right now, I'm kind of stuck with trying to get the Wildcat off of the shaft. I threw a whole bunch of penetrating oil on it. I'm going to leave it there for a few days, maybe a week, and then I'll show up and work on it again. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you something kind of cool that I discovered. What I have here is a monitor. 
Looks like a regular 15.6 inch monitor. The cool thing about this is though, it's 12 volts, or it can run off the USB cable, which I have hooked up to it right now. Now, if you've watched some of the earlier videos where I talked about the electronics that I have on the boat, where I'm using some uh, Galaxy Tab tablets uh, as monitors for my, uh, for the avionics. Well, you'll notice in one of the videos I mentioned that one of my iPads was getting old with batteries and I wanted to replace it with another uh, tablet. Uh, however, tablets bigger than say 9, 10 inches can become very expensive. And I really wanted something bigger. So what I did was I picked up this 15 and a half inch monitor, 12 volts, so I can hook it up to the USB with the idea that I was going to hook up maybe some sort of a mini computer to it, maybe something like a Raspberry Pi. Well, then it occurred to me that my cell phone is actually a very powerful computer and it can run the apps that I usually use, like Navionics, uh, Windy, uh, Sonar Phone. So the idea was that I could connect my cell phone up to this monitor. Uh, the monitor has USB-C inputs for power and also input for connecting it up to a computer. Also, it's HDMI as well. So if I connect this up through the USB-C port here, let's see. Okay, I'm going to put my phone on. So as you can see, my phone, which is running Navionics, is now mirrored over to this, this 15 and a half inch monitor. Now you might be asking yourself, who wants to tie up their phone as a, as a, a navigation device? Well, in my case, I always update my phone maybe every couple of years and I get the newer phone. This actually is not my phone. This is my previous phone. It's a Galaxy Note 8, which has been sitting in my sock drawer for the last two, three years. So basically, for the cost of $125 on Amazon for this monitor, and they make, there's different brands, I don't even know what this one is, but there's, there's plenty to choose from. And an old phone sitting in my sock drawer. I have a tablet, 15 and a half inch, running my navigation. I can run my sonar on it. I can run Windy or any other apps. In fact, um, since it's connected to my phone, which is connected to Wi-Fi on the boat, I can watch a movie if I want. Or I can put on my favorite YouTube channel. Anyway, just thought I'd toss that out there as the latest thing that I'm doing with electronics. Um, I am really happy about the way this is coming out. There is one other thing I should mention on this. If you just hook it up to the phone, which I can do, I can pull out the power supply. It will run just off the phone because the, the phone also sends out a charge to it, enough to actually run this. However, it'll drain your phone down in about an hour. So what you're going to need to do is have a separate USB cord for power. Now, I've installed USB uh, outlets on my upper helm, so it's not a big deal. This thing, is, this thing is basically going to be powered by my 32 volt house pack, so it'll run forever. Anyway, I thought it was a cool idea. If you guys think it's something uh, cool to do, you know, let me know, or if you have any questions about it, uh, just you know, comment below, and uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Uh, Lynn and I are going to be trying to get the rest of that, uh, the rest of the wind list out on the boat and see what needs to be done as far as having it rebuilt or, or replaced. Until then.